is 50 years west of Delhi. And my father migrated to Calcutta. And thereafter, he migrated to Bombay. I came to Bombay when I was one year old. So, pretty much, I am a Bombayite in every sense of the world. Uh, my father was a very well known bullion merchant. He did very well in his career. But unfortunately, there was a huge recession in 1950, 1950, and he lost most of his wealth. In fact, not very widely known. And then tragedy struck us. He died in an air crash in November 1951, leaving behind my mother and six of her siblings. He had the foresight to run a very significant life insurance policy, which saw the family through. Uh, but the rest, really, my mother was then minimal education. I brought the six children up. To a credit, she did a wonderful job. Of the six siblings, uh, four of us went to IIT Bombay and graduated from there. Two of us got PhDs. My brother-in-law, my sister's husband also has a PhD. So I think she was quite far-sighted. Education on the backbone of the family. Uh, we had literally no wealth. Because after I finished my PhD, the funds on the insurance policy had literally done. So it was a difficult beginning. So we talked about this a bit. So one mantra is that the education and upbringing is the real wealth. From that you can create wealth. But wealth is not for the good education. Education comes first. And see the initial period, you know, so much of turmoil. 1951, lost the father. And then 67, actually, he was given that job of building up or starting the TCS. So, sir, uh, now after you did your uh, qualification, you came out uh, from MIT. Uh, how, 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 how did you came into contact with uh, Mr. Tata? And what was the reason for immediately taking up that job? And how challenging that initial period of your starting of your real career? Well, it's a very strange story. And God Almighty has a hand in most of the activities that we have. We do. See, I returned to India in 1965 after my master's degree as for the summer holiday. As you know, in America, June to September is the summer vacation. And in that vacation, I, I returned to India. And uh, within a month, I met uh, Asha, who is now my wife. And I said this publicly that I, I fell in love with her very first meeting. And uh, I proposed to her during our second meeting. <laughs> and she said yes. Now, you may be surprised to know that there was no mahura for marriage in that time. And the Pandit said this, the next mahura is five or six months away. In those days, you didn't travel like you do today. Today, at the drop of a hat, you pick up the plane, go to London, and you know, like I've done, I don't know, maybe one or a hundred times. But in those days, it was rare to do that. So I had nothing to do. For the evening, I was spent with my then fiancé, but during the day, I was bored to death. So my neighbor, Mr. Hain, the Ramnath Rao, was the marketing manager of Tata Paisa. I told him what should I do. He said, go and meet Professor Rustam Joksi. I don't know how many of you have heard that name. He was the head of HR of the entire Tata group. 
So you should not believe him. And I went and had a chat with him. And I told him that uh, I was going back to MIT. I was at the top grade. In, in, in America, they don't give you a rank. I don't know if you know that. They only give you a grade point average. So I had the highest grade point average at, at MIT, which gives me the Ford Foundation Fellowship. The equivalent of the Rhodes Scholar kind of thing. So I said, I'll go back in six months, but I have six months, can I do something for you? So he promptly picked up the phone and talked to Mr. P. Bhagwa. That time, Tata didn't know very much about computers, let me tell you. Mr. P. Bhagwa was the managing director of the Tata Electric Company. And he somehow thought that computers have something to do with electricity. <laughs> it's all true story. You know? <laughs> So I, I went and saw Mr. Agarwal and I said, I'm here for a few months, can I do something for you? Well, uh, you can't get a job, there is no responsibility can be given. He said, sit down, look around you and write a few reports. So whatever you think is appropriate. So that's how it began. So I joined Tata in 65 July or so and I wrote three reports for them. One was to create what is now TCS, to start a computer company. The other was to automate load dispatch. The question is when you have many generators uh, in the electric company, which should generate how much power to optimize their losses. It is a computer problem. So we wrote up a system how that could be done. And third was to computerize the billing of Tata Electric Company using TIFR computer. Now, the bills were few, but the value of the bill were very large, relatively speaking. So even two days interest would be a substantial sum of money. And then, of course, I got married uh, in, in November. Uh, in January, my wife and I packed our bags and went back to the United States. To my great surprise, I learned later they had accepted all my three reports and Mr. Agarwala and the Tatas kept chasing me to come back. Uh, I was very happy when I was. I was working at Project Mac, which was the best known software uh, research lab in, in, in America in those days. And like all Indians, I thought I'd spend a few years in America before returning to, to India. It's all, I think, Indians try to do that. And then Mr. Agarwal played his trump card. He said, you come back and I tell you what, you can start this company for us and you can even head this company. Now, that was unheard of. Fresh PhD, heading a Tata company is unknown. So I could not say no to that. That's what brought me back somewhere around the mid of 1967. And I started TCS. That's what happened. Good, good. So it was really a very, very respectable assignment and job you got because even we know now also to get into Tata's is not otherwise also that easy. And with JRD and his vision, I think he saw in you uh, a promising young uh, top scholar. So then, uh, uh, Dr. Saab, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. Kanodia, then what, uh, like, uh, what was the reason for uh, uh, leaving that, uh, you know, such a wonderful job and further career with Tata's and starting your own company, Data Matrix. What do you want to do? Start your own venture. Yeah, sure. Part of the reason is genetic. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm from a Rajasani family. <laughs> So we all Rajasthanis by and large want to be in our own business. So that's one reason. They love me very much and I am uh, extremely fortunate. I am most grateful to them at, at every meeting I say this to them. And the second point, you may be surprised to know this. There was a ceiling of salaries in 1967. And that ceiling was only 5 lakhs a year. Dr. Agarwal, maybe, maybe, maybe. Unbelievable, right? 
if you say that the ceiling of any salary, including Jerry Tata, besides the dividend is a separate issue, business income is a separate issue, but the salary income had a cap of 5 lakhs per year. I told you I had lost my father and we had run out the insurance money and five of my siblings and my mother were dependent on me. And there is no way we could survive on five lakhs per year. I'll be very honest. Uh, therefore, I decided that yes, it's a very difficult decision. Uh, Tata loved me, I was the chief executive, I knew every Tata director by virtue of my position. But I decided to take the plan because the family could not have survived all of it. And in retrospect, I think the right thing that I did. We went to a tough period and talked about it, but that's what motivated me to, to do that. So, I mean, what were the initial uh teething problems uh, you faced in setting up. Uh, for the information of you all, you know Datamatics today, what is the market cap of Datamatics global uh, services? Any guess? The market cap of this company is uh, almost about 2000 crore today. I think yesterday it was 1980 crores or something. So from scratch, having problem even in the initial capital, had to leave such a lucrative job just because there was a ceiling of 5 lakh rupees a year. He plunged into that business from zero and today that company is 2000 crore market cap company and he I think holds the, he and his family, the majority of the shareholding. Congratulations for that to you. But will you take us through this? Uh, journey of uh, building up data metrics and also while you are uh, replying that or answering that what does actually data metrics do i understand artificial intelligence so will you a little bit elaborate on that what are your functions and services and who are basically the user of your services and your products uh, initially how did you build up this company the show, uh, you are from the finance field. A lot of your people are from the finance field. Uh, I must admit that in those days, see, there were no P funds uh, in that time. Uh, there was no venture capital at that time. And banks and bank loans are also very very difficult, especially for the new tech or. IT or service industry, only for hardcore manufacturing, only the bank loan used to be available. Yes, sir. That is correct. And bank loans were almost impossible to get. So they wanted collateral, and the only collateral was my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, was, it was a huge, huge problem. But you know, when you were in Tata's, you get overconfident, and I became overconfident. I remember I could go and see a bank chairman just by shutting in my car, CEO of TCS, and I would get called even if I didn't have an apartment. After I left, I would send in my car, Datamatics, and they would not see me for months together. <laughs> this is India. So I, I understand it now better than I did at that time. It was a, it was a tough journey. But ultimately, finance is the fuel that, that accelerates your, your growth. And I made the very serious mistake in that respect of not going public much earlier. Uh, because if, it, if I had gone public, then there would have been funds available. So there was no borrowing could not be done. We did not go public. So it was only accumulation of profit. And there's only so much can you do when you accumulate profit. So it was a, it was a tough journey. But we kept at it. We kept it pegged away. And I think the results are not all to see. As the show pointed out, the market cap raised around 2,000 crore, but the P ratio is still uh, yeah. very low, at about 17. Uh, I, I hope it gets to 25, which is the norm in the industry. And God willing, it will go further. So God will be very kind to me, and, uh, and then I have, later on, I have two sons who are with me and in the business. Uh, both are very well educated, both are line holders. 
and they are now running the company. That was a great help. So here, if you can cover uh, something about your family.